Thank you, Lord. Now let's look at Philippians chapter four, just a very short passage, two, two short verses this morning. Let's read together. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In Luke chapter 11, the writer uh, records an interaction between Jesus and his disciples. Um, as he did on a regular basis, Jesus had been praying. After Jesus had finished praying, one of his, one of his disciples made a request of him, Lord, teach us to pray. Now, the disciples knew about prayer. I mean, these were good Jewish boys. Uh, they had heard prayers read from the law and the prophets. They had heard their religious leaders praying. They had been praying most of their lives. But now, they had been with Jesus for a while. They had observed his commitment to prayer. They had seen him pray. They had heard some of his prayers. And the praying of Jesus was different. There, there, there was a deep connection in his praying. There was passion and purpose in his praying. His prayers were meaningful and effective. There was no feeling of ritual. There was no show. Jesus' prayers were something fresh and new that the disciples hadn't seen before. So their request, Lord, teach us to pray. They recognized the fact that their praying was not like his praying at all. And I say praying because it is active. Prayer is a noun and praying is a verb. Our prayer life needs to be a praying life. It needs to be active and ongoing and purposeful and passionate and productive. The disciples wanted a prayer life that reflected the prayer life of Jesus. Lord, teach us to pray. You know, we would do well to make that same request ourselves. Teach us to pray. Teach us to communicate with the Father. Teach us how to get beyond ourselves and touch heaven. Teach us, Lord, to pray with faith. Teach us to pray with persistence. Teach us to pray with conviction and fervency. Lord, teach us to pray. One writer said, prayer is so simple that the smallest child can pray, but it is so great that the mightiest man of God cannot truly have mastered it at all. In looking at our text today, there are five things that I want us to see. First is the purpose of prayer. Let your request be made known to God. Prayer is not just something to check off a, a daily task list, you know, uh, get up check. Take a shower, check. Brush your teeth, check. Read verse of the day, check. Pray, check. Praying should be a regular part of our daily lives. Prayer is vital to our ongoing relationship with God. At its core, prayer is communion with God. Acts 17, 28 says, in him we live and move and have our being. Communion with God must be, in the, must be the element in which we live and move and have our being. Prayer is both a privilege and a necessity. It is a privilege because God invites us to come into his presence, fellowship with him, to cast our cares on him, to worship him, and to hear his voice. It is a necessity because prayer keeps us aligned with God's plans and purposes. It provides strength, help, and hope. Prayer is the place of renewal and refreshing. When you read through the Gospels, you see time after time of the intense and often exhausting ministry that Jesus had. And after those times of intense and exhausting ministry, Jesus would go to a solitary place and pray. Luke 5, 16 says that often Jesus would slip away into the wilderness and pray. 
The old hymn says, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. The purpose of prayer is communion with God. Next is the priority of prayer. Making prayer an ongoing part of our lives is essential to our spiritual health and growth. When we make prayer a lifestyle, we learn to pray first. Pray before the day begins. Pray when the day ends. Pray when you go to bed. Pray b before you go to work or school. Pray before you send that text. Pray before you eat. Pray before you drive, especially here in Jacksonville. Pray before you travel. Pray when bad things happen. Pray before bad things happen. In every situation, pray first. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 55, 17, evening, morning, and noon, I will pray. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 instructs us to pray without ceasing. James 5, 13 says, is anyone among you suffering? then he must pray. Make prayer more than an occasional event. Develop a lifestyle of prayer. And as you develop this lifestyle of prayer, you'll grow in Christ. You'll grow in your praying, and you'll experience more of God's power and activity in your life. Pray first. Pray continuously. Make prayer your first in instinct, not your last resort. Yeah. Prayer is an essential part of our walk with Christ and must be a priority for the believer. We've seen the purpose of prayer. We've seen the priority of prayer. Let's look at the practice of prayer. Our text today tells us to pray about what? Everything. What did he mean by that? He means everything. When we pray, we talk with one whose domain covers every phase and facet of our lives. There is no area of your life that is excluded from prayer. God cares for the whole person, mind, soul, body, and spirit. There is no area of your life that is of no concern to God. He cares for you. With God, there is no prayer too small, nor any prayer too big for God to hear and act upon. Why? because you are his child, because his son is interceding for you, and because his spirit is inspiring and empowering your prayers. Prayer is more than presenting your wish list to God. It's more than a spiritual 911 call, which a lot of us use it as. Pray, praying only when we have an emergency or an urgent need. Now, there's nothing wrong with taking our needs to God and our concerns to God in prayer. In fact, we are encouraged to do so right here in our text today. Let your request be made known to God. First Peter 5, 7 tells us to cast all of our cares on him because he cares for us. And in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus gave us the example of praying, give us today our daily bread. Daily bread here is symbolic of all of the daily needs of our lives. Daily provision, daily spiritual renewal and sustenance, strength in the face of temptation. They're all included in that give us this day our daily bread. God wants us to pray about our needs, to bring our needs, our cares and concerns, our frailties, our weaknesses to him. I saw this somewhere about this phrase, give us today our daily bread. It said, give us today our daily bread is for needs, not greeds. 
Attitude matters in our praying. What we sometimes forget is that give us today our daily bread is preceded by your kingdom come, your will be done. Yes, it's his will, not your will, not my will, God's will. Prayer isn't about giving God a to-do list. When we reduce prayer to that, we weaken our spiritual walk and end up as anemic, powerless Christians. Prayer is not only about presenting our needs to God, but it is also about aligning our priorities with his. An effective prayer life means that we learn to listen to God's voice in prayer as much or even more than we speak to God ourselves. Powerful prayer involves two-way communication, us speaking to God and God speaking to us. Prayer is ultimately for God's glory. John 14, 13 says, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. God wants to reveal himself to you through prayer. He wants you to know him more and to draw closer to him through prayer. Our text tells us to let our request be made known to God. Why? Doesn't God already know our needs? Yes, he does. Jesus says so in Matthew chapter six. While God already knows our needs before we pray, he wants to hear from you. The Father is interested in a relationship with you and not an ATM relationship. He wants you to know that you can come to him and bring your prayers and supplications before him. He wants you to know him in prayer, to know as Psalm 46, two says, that though the earth shakes and the mountains fall into the sea, we need not fear. To know that as Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 say, his mercies never cease and his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. To know as Hebrews 10, 23 says, that we can hold on to hope because he who promised is faithful. And as 2 Thessalonians 3, 3 says, he will establish you and guard you against the evil one. To know that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. To know that through him, we are more than conquerors. He wants us to know that as Zephaniah writes, he will rejoice over you with gladness, quiet you by his love, and exult over you with singing. God wants you to pray because he wants to sing over you. He wants to sing blessings over you. He wants to sing peace over your life. He wants to sing healing into your life. Healing for brokenness, healing for illness. God wants to sing over you. And he does that as we pray. There's another thing about the practice of prayer we see in our text, and it's two words that we could easily skip over, with thanksgiving. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Colossians 4, 2 says, devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. It is important for us to recognize that God is our source for everything. Every practical daily provision, every spiritual blessing, every answered prayer is bestowed on us by the grace of God. Over and again, the Psalms say, give thanks to the Lord. Why? Because he is good. Maintaining an attitude of thankfulness guards us against selfish praying. A thankful heart guards us against an attitude of entitlement. A thankful 
A thankful heart recognizes that everything we have is a gift from his hand. That whatever the provision, whatever the blessing, it is given by the grace of God. We've looked at the purpose of prayer, the priority of prayer, the practice of prayer. Now let's look at the power of prayer. In the New Testament, when the church prayed, things happened. Prison doors were opened, chains were broken, the sick were healed. Through prayer, lives are changed and the broken are made whole. The power of prayer is not in the words that we say. The power of prayer isn't in some well-crafted turn of phrase. The power of prayer rests in the one to whom we pray. James 5, 16 says, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much. Effective prayer is accompanied by faith, according to Matthew 21. Effective prayer is offered in Jesus' name, according to John 16, 23. I know we don't use this anymore, so some of uh, the younger ones may have to think about this a little bit. But, you know, think about a check, a, a, a that, paper thing. I don't use them myself anymore. If I have to send a check, I have to go on to the, the banking app and, and tell the bank to send a check for me. Um, but think, think about that piece of paper. You can write anything you want on that line in that little box. You know, One million dollars. You can write anything you want. But it doesn't mean a thing if there's not a sin signature on the bottom of that check. Our prayers don't mean a thing if there's not a signature at the bottom. And that signature is the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We pray in his name. Praying in Jesus' name isn't just about saying those words. Praying in Jesus' name is praying according to Jesus' character, Jesus' nature, according to Jesus' will. In his name is more of a frame of mind than a form of speech. Effective prayer is simple prayer, according to Matthew 6 and 7. God isn't impressed with your vocabulary. He's not interested in vain repetitions. He is interested in prayers that are from the heart. Effective prayer is persistent prayer. Luke 11 says, ask, seek, knock. Just before Jesus says that, there, he tells the parable of the persistent friend. And this persistent friend comes to his friend's house at midnight, it says, and, and knocks on the door. He said, I need some bread. I need some bread. And the, the friend, loosely called, I guess, <laughs> says, go away. You know, my children and I are in bed. You know, but the friend keeps on knocking. The friend keeps on asking. And eventually, Scripture says the friend will give him what he asks, what he needs, because of his persistence. Effective prayer is prayed in humility. In Luke chapter 18, Jesus talks about a Pharisee and a publican going to the temple to pray. And the Pharisee gets in the temple and, and he gets into a position and to a place where everybody can see him and he talks loud so everybody can hear his prayer and know how religious he is. And how? No, it's not. The publican goes over, gets down away from everybody else, bows on his knees, turns his face to the ground and says, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to hear my prayer. 
I'm not worthy to come before you, but help me, Lord. And who did Jesus say God heard? The publican. The publican. Effective prayers prayed in humility. What did he say in 2 Chronicles 7, 14? If my people would what? Humble themselves and pray. God hears the prayers of the broken and the humble. Effective prayer is, is praying in the spirit. The phrase effectual fervent is translated from the Greek word energeo. It's the root word of, of our word energy. Our prayers are energized by the Holy Spirit. We are exhorted in Ephesians 6, 18 and Jude 20 to pray in the spirit. Now, praying in the spirit isn't just praying in tongues. I believe that that is part of it. And I practice that. But praying in the spirit is much more than praying in tongues. Praying in the spirit is about keeping an open connection with God where he leads you through your day, where he speaks to you and you speak to him. Praying in the spirit means seeking more of, for more of the presence of God in your lives. It means developing a deeper sensitivity to the leading and to the moving of the Holy Spirit. Praying in the spirit is saying, I want the manifest presence of God working in and through my life. Praying in the Spirit is saying, I want the Spirit to work inside of me, transforming me into the likeness of Christ. I want the Spirit working in me so that what he is working in me starts working out of me and starts touching other people around me. Praying in the Spirit means becoming a spiritual conduit for God's grace and love to flow through. To pray in the Spirit means that the Holy Spirit is the moving and guiding force behind your prayers. When you pray in the Spirit, He is the one who motivates, enables, and energizes your prayers. Praying in the Spirit is praying in the Spirit's power and according to the Spirit's direction. The Spirit is guiding you how to pray, and the Spirit is guiding you what to pray for. Oswald Sanders wrote, God never intended that prayer should be left to our own unaided faculties. He gave the Holy Spirit to instruct, inspire, and illumine our hearts and mind. Without the Spirit, our prayer life would likely be characterized by weakness and inadequacy. Unaided by the Spirit, we would most likely pray for things that are not only contrary to God's will, but harmful to ourselves. Praying in the Spirit is more than just being helped in our prayers by the Spirit. It is aligning our prayers with the Spirit's prayers. Praying in the Spirit means that we are praying in the same name in which the Spirit prays, the matchless name of Jesus. Praying in the Spirit gives our prayers wings and lifts them to the throne room of God. When you learn to pray in the Spirit, your prayers are going to be guided and empowered by the Spirit of God, aligned with the will of God, according to the Word of God, in the name of the Son of God, and carried to the throne of God. Praying in the Spirit means that our prayers can be bold prayers that avail much. According to Romans 8, 26, praying in the Spirit means our prayers can be travailing prayers, because the Spirit helps us in our weakness. And when we don't know what to pray, the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. Praying in the Spirit means that our prayers can be bold prayers, warfare prayers, to the pulling down of strongholds, waging war against principalities and powers, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Praying in the Spirit means our prayers will be prayers of faith because the Holy Spirit will give us the faith and empower us to believe. The Spirit can work in amazing ways when we are submitted to Him and praying through Him. There are people right here in this room that I know personally that have stories of times when the Holy Spirit did amazing things through prayer. When there was a moment of conviction, of insight, 
or a word that came because someone was praying in the Spirit. I've shared this before, but I want to share it again this morning. A few years back, um, I was going through a very difficult time. Something unexpected and difficult that happened in, in our lives. Myself, Rebecca, Taylor, and Jordan. And I was really feeling the effects of it. Because I felt most of it was my fault. Um, most of everything at my house is, is my fault. <laughs> So I'll just lay that there. <laughs> but this experience had caused me to question some things. I, I believed with all my heart that Rebecca and I had heard from God about taking a step of faith and had followed his direction in obedience. But things didn't go at all as I thought they would. And it ended pretty badly. And it left me stunned. And the enemy was trying to tear me down and tell me that I had failed God and missed his will. How many of you know that the enemy loves to hit you when you're down? That's why we need one another. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit. At that time, my, prayer, my parents had a prayer partner named Tressie, who's gone on to be with Jesus now. But Tressie walked in the Spirit and prayed in the Spirit. Tressie was kind of scary. Um, One day, during this difficult time in my life, I was alone with God and just pouring out my heart to Him. I was full of questions. I was full of self-doubt. Wasn't even sure that my prayers were getting past the ceiling of my house. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Suddenly, my phone rang, and Tressie was on the other end. Now, I had never received a phone call from Tressie before. In fact, I had only met her one time. I only knew knew her, really, through, through my parents. I said, hello, and she told me who it was. Then I didn't get to say another word. She began speaking to me as if she had been in the room listening to my conversation with God. She told me what I was thinking. She told me what I was feeling. Then she told me that God had instructed her to call and tell me that he wasn't finished with me yet, that I hadn't missed him, that he hadn't left me, and he was going to bring us through. Then she said, that's all the Lord told me to say. Bye. (laughs) She had delivered God's message and she was done. I never got to say another word. I sat there stunned. But also reminded that God cares for us. God cares for his people. He reminded me that he has people who walk in his spirit, who stay connected to him, that move and act as he directs and minister wherever he needs them to. When you are praying in the spirit, he will direct your prayers. He will direct your paths. He will empower your praying. And he will use you to minister, to pray for, to strengthen, and to encourage others. All for his purposes and all for his glory. The Spirit creates spiritual connections that go beyond human boundaries. So pray in the Spirit at all times and on all occasions. Pray 
in the spirit, praying in the spirit is how we embrace that lifestyle of prayer. Praying in the spirit is what empowers our prayers and makes them effective. Praying in the spirit is how we connect to God and align our prayers to his will. Praying in the spirit will change the way that you pray. The praying in the spirit will change the way that you see other people. Praying in the spirit will change your life, your walk, the way you talk, the way you think, the way you see things, and the way that you respond to the circumstances around you. The power of prayer is that we pray in the spirit through the son and to the father. We've looked at the purpose of prayer, the priority of prayer, the practice of prayer, and the power of prayer. And I quickly want to talk about the promise of prayer. The promise of prayer is that when we pray in his name, he hears us. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, This is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we have asked from him. God heard Hagar crying in the wilderness. God heard Jonah from the belly of a whale. God heard David in a cave. God heard a thief hanging on a cross. Joshua prayed and the sun stood still. Hannah prayed and God gave her a son. Solomon prayed and God gave him wisdom. Elijah prayed and there was no rain. He prayed again and the rain resumed. Jabez prayed and God heard and answered his prayer. In Psalm 120, the psalmist said, I cried unto the Lord and he heard me. The Lord listens to the prayers of his people. He hears the cries of his children. 1 Peter 3, 12 says, For the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears attend to their prayer. The promise of prayer is that when we pray, God hears us. God hears and answers prayer. Now, that answer may not always be what we want. Sometimes the answer is no. Why? Because God has a better plan. Isaiah 55, eight and nine tells us that God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts higher than our thoughts. And God's plan is always better than our plan. Always. God knows the end from the beginning. He holds, he knows what tomorrow holds. We don't, but we can know who holds tomorrow and know that the one who holds tomorrow also holds us in his hand. We can know that he knows the plans he has for us, plans for a future and a hope. Sometimes God answers our pr- to God's answer to our prayer is, I have something better for you. God protects you. It might that be that we ask what we are asking for isn't good for us. And maybe, maybe actually would harm us. We think we know what we're praying for. But, but God says, uh, that's, that's not good for you. I, I'm not going to answer that. Proverbs 2, 8 says, God guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Sometimes the answer to prayer is not yet. We're not ready for the answer. We're not ready to receive what we've prayed for. Perhaps we have some lessons to learn before the answer comes. Maybe we have some spiritual maturing to do before the answer comes. And by the way, God is not subject to your timing. He works in his own perfect timing and according to his perfect will. Answers may be delayed, but delay isn't denial. But know this, everything God does is motivated by love. 
and he always has your best interest at heart. Romans 8, 28, you know it, says, we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. In everything, he is weaving and working for your benefit and for his glory. In all this, we learn to trust God. Whatever the answer to our prayer may be at the moment, we trust him. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18 says, Therefore, we do not lose heart. But though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. For our momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And God is more concerned about your eternal than your temporary. The promise of prayer is that God hears us when we pray. And another promise of prayer is found in verse 7 of our text. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In prayer, God will meet our fear with a fear not. Fear not, I am with you. Fear not, the waters won't overtake you. Fear not, the fire won't consume you. Fear not, I bring you good news. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love, and a sound mind. And the peace of God, the wondrous peace, the peace that passes all understanding, will guard your heart, will guard your mind in Christ Jesus. Are you troubled? Pray. Discouraged? Pray. Distressed? Pray. Going through the fire? Pray. Feeling weak? Pray. Do you need guidance? You probably guessed it already. Pray. <laughs> need healing? Pray. Need wisdom? Pray. Have unsaved loved ones? Pray. Have a neighbor in need? Pray. You've heard Pastor John say many times, you can't do God's part and God won't do your part. So pray. Pray in faith. Pray in his name with an attitude of humility. Pray with expectancy. Pray with persistence. Pray with simplicity from the heart. Pray in the spirit and pray with thanksgiving. You do what you can do, and then you let God do what only he can do. Hallelujah. You pray because God hears the prayers of his children. You pray because, hallelujah, God has the power to answer every prayer that is prayed. You pray because he invites you to cast your cares upon him. You pray because prayer touches heaven and changes things on earth. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus.